Welcome to this devotional video from Open Door Church Sunbury. On uh, Mondays we have been looking at the book of Ruth, which gives us some explanation of how Bethlehem came to be the place where Jesus was born. We started this series in December, just before, shortly before Christmas, and we've now got as far as uh, Ruth chapter 3, which we start on today. And we're going to read Ruth chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. <clears throat> One day, Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you, where you will be well provided for. Now Boaz, <coughs> with whose women you have worked, is a relative of ours. Tonight he will be winnowing barley in, on the threshing floor. Wash, put on perfume, and get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you're there until he's finished eating and drinking. <clears throat> when he lies down, <clears throat> note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man. He turned, and there was a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant Ruth, she said. <clears throat> Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he replies. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Although it is true I am a guardian redeemer of our family, there is another who is more closely related than I. Stay here for the night, and in the morning... If he wants to do his duty as your guardian redeemer, good, let him redeem you. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognised. And he said, no one must know that a woman came to the threshing floor. Naomi has a plan. Ruth has returned to Bethlehem with her and is living with her. But Naomi is concerned about what will happen to Ruth in the longer term, what will happen to her after she, after Naomi dies. <clears throat> now, Naomi is a clever lady. She has done some research. She knows Boaz's legal obligations. She knows where he will be at night and how Ruth can have a private conversation with him by uncovering his feet so that he'll wake up in the night. Quite a cunning plan. So she sets it all up and gives uh, Ruth the instructions what to do, but it still requires obedience and courage on Ruth's part. And perhaps this is a lesson in discipling new believers. How much do you do for them and how much do you let them do uh, themselves? It reminded me of two incidents in the Gospels, in the life of Jesus. First of all, um, when he sent disciples to borrow that donkey on before his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He set it all up. He said, if anybody asks you why you're unloosing, un untying that donkey, just say the Lord needs it um, and they'll let you take it. So uh, Jesus has set it all up. The disciples just have to obey the instructions. And then shortly after that, he sends them to go and find the upper room, which he says, you'll find an upper room already. Just prepare there for us to eat the Passover. And he set it all up. The disciples just have to go and follow Jesus's instructions and find the upper room, just like Ruth had to just follow Naomi's instructions and end up in this rather strange nocturnal conversation uh, with Boaz. And maybe that is a lesson for us in how we can uh, disciple and train younger Christians to uh, live God's way, to live by faith, to step out 
and trust him but a bit of setting up sometimes needs to be done uh, maybe the the groundwork <coughs> needs to be done by a more mature believer and then let the younger one uh, step out and take that risk of of faith so we get to this <coughs> point where uh, Ruth has obeyed all Naomi's instructions and there she is alone with Boaz in the threshing floor in the middle of the night and after explaining who she is she says spread the corner of your garment over me verse 9. This was actually as strange as it may seem the way of asking him to marry her. <clears throat> what? What's going on here? Was it the leap? Was it a leap year? Well <clears throat> I don't think that custom uh, was uh, had been invented at that time, but it was a request that Ruth was entitled to make. Seems strange, doesn't it? The the woman asking the man uh, to marry her, but it was a request request she was entitled to make if no nearer relative was willing to do so. And we'll see more about that next week when we look at chapter four, where we'll see that it's also connected with property rights. And uh, we have this strange combination of marriage and, and uh, redemption of property, which we'll, we'll look at next week in chapter four. But <clears throat> the marriage aspect seems to be an extension of the, a brother's obligation under Mosaic law to marry his deceased brother's widow and provide him with an heir. That's Deuteronomy 25 verses five to six. So here there are no, no surviving brother to do it. So it seems that you then find the next nearest relative who is able to fulfill the obligations of a brother to those brothers who've died to their widow. Of course, the other widow didn't come back from Moab. So um, we've only got Ruth uh, to be concerned with here. And when Ruth asks Boaz to fulfill this obligation, he commends Ruth for not having taken the easier option of attracting one of the young harvesters. Ruth was no doubt thinking, well, I need to find another husband. Um, but she followed Naomi's instructions rather than do it her own way, as she might have done working among the harvesters and hoping that one of them would perhaps take a liking to her. But uh, no, she follows Naomi's instructions and ends up, we will see, with the husband God wants for her. However, Boaz finds himself, doesn't he, in a really tricky situation. Here he is in the middle of the night on his own with a woman to whom at this point he's not married. <laughs> this doesn't look good. Um, now, <clears throat> Boaz knows Ruth, we're told, to be a woman of noble character, verse 11. So what he does, he sends her home early the next morning so that no one will know that she's been there all night. <clears throat> now, this is quite a tricky situation to manage. Um, for us as Christians, we have this teaching from Paul in Ephesians 5 verse 3. He says, but among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, because that's improper for God's holy people. <clears throat> so we need to ensure that we stand out from the culture around us. The culture around us would make the assumption that, yeah, well, it's okay. What does it matter if you spend the night uh, with with a, a, a person of the opposite sex to whom you're not married? That's just the normal thing in the culture around us. People live together without being married, never mind just spending a night together. But as Christians, of course, we are to be different from that. The church is to be distinctive. We're to be salt and light in the world. We are to be uh, different from the world and the culture around us. And yet, how do we manage that? We can uh, manage it by saying, I will never spend time alone with a person of the opposite sex to whom I'm not married. And you can make a hard and fast rule out of it. But then what do you do when you get into a tricky situation like Boaz did, where you can't avoid being on your own in that, in that situation? Well, he did all that he could uh, to avoid it being seen that that had happened, so as not to create the impression that anything immoral had actually gone on. And I believe that nothing immoral did go on. Uh, we're told in chapter four later, uh, the first occasion when um, Boaz and Ruth had any intimate relations. So nothing happened <laughs> during the night, but they need to, he needs to make it clear to everybody that nothing happened. He needs special wisdom. So let's ensure that we stand out from the culture around us 
uh, and that we manage tricky situations wisely. Sometimes where hard and fast rules about how you deal with this sort of thing don't necessarily work and yet find a way of ensuring that we are still light in the world, that we are still different, that we are still distinctive, and show the world that actually there is a different way to live. Once you follow Christ, he gives you a different worldview, a different set of values, a different way of living, which is different from the culture and the world around us, just like Boaz was able to do uh, by God's wisdom. Let's pray. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity such as Naomi had to disciple younger Christians. And I pray that you will give each of us who are more mature the opportunity to do that if we're younger, to the uh, opportunity to be discipled by a more mature believer. And thank you for the lessons that we learned both from what Boaz did and from what Jesus did in actually uh, paving the way uh, to encourage uh, younger Christians to step out in faith, uh, as uh, Ruth was able to do, following Naomi's instructions. And also, we ask for your wisdom in this minefield of sexual ethics in the culture in which we live today, that we might make sure that as God's holy people, we do stand out, we do swim against the tide, we do show that belonging to you and following Jesus is different from a life lived in the world and that we would have wisdom to know how to handle even the trickiest situations that might crop up where Satan tries to set a trap for us but that we might not be outwitted by him, we might not be unaware of his schemes and that we might have your wisdom to, uh, to do what is right. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>